six. Good afternoon. This is Dr. John Bennett from Miami. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. It's nine o'clock in the Ukraine, and it's two o'clock in Philadelphia. Uh, we have the pleasure today of having Yuri uh, Sid, Sidnenko from uh, the Ukraine. He's uh, a, a noted medical illustrator, mostly in the field of nanomedicine, uh, but he's also starting to do a little oncology. So we had an interview before with uh, uh, with Yuri, and, and we're going to go over the probably basically the same territory. Uh, we're joined also today with by John Hewitt. He's a medical writer that uh, specializes mostly in neuro the neurosciences. Uh, he's going to uh, be asking questions along with me uh, after Yuri gives his uh, presentation. So welcome, Yuri. It's all yours. Hello. Uh, thank you for John, for this interview. Uh, I'm very happy to introduce my work, and uh, I'm very happy to see you again and uh, be again in uh, hangouts uh, with you. Okay, Yuri, can you could you just take us through uh, your life? You know, when you started. Uh, I understand you went to medical school. Uh, just basically your life leading up to when you started animating and when you went to medical school and. When you start your started your love of animation? Uh, yes, it was uh, from my childhood. I was fond of uh, some kind of medical books. I read it. Uh, I see illustrations, uh, and then uh, I see some TV shows about how human bodies uh, <laughs> uh, develops and how human is inside. Uh, and then I have a, a proper uh, medical certification as medical student, and then uh, it was some kind of technical background uh, about uh, microtechnology in the field of uh, nanotechnology. And then I tried to put all my knowledge into this uh, science of uh, medical animation and uh, into nanomedical animation. So I use my knowledge in medicine and my knowledge in computer science to make some kind of intersection of this. Okay, exactly when uh, did you start? I guess uh, the, the use of the computer accelerated your, your animating uh, possibilities, right? Or did, did you start animating before uh, the computers was being used for animation? No, I started uh, animated uh, only on computer uh, background because of uh, I haven't uh, enough tools, and uh, to my shame, I can draw by my hand, so I, I can't make any illustration with pen or pencil. So it's... Oh, okay. So the yeah. software, the software is that good that, that yes. you can you can learn to be a good artist on the uh, internet on on a, on a on a software. Yes, yes. I use a lot of software, and I use uh, very powerful computers to make these pictures and to make animations. But uh, you don't need to be a, a painter, or you don't need to be an artist to make some kind of uh, pictures as it was before. So you, you can make it a very simple way in computer software, and uh, then you can make uh, some kind of changes. Uh, uh, and you, you can see how your work uh, changed to a bet, better site, and that's why it's very easy. Well, you know, John and I were talking before the, the telecast, and he mentioned, he asked me if he, he uses software or does it by hand. Is that right, John? That's what you were asking me, right? Yeah, when, when you said medical il illustrator, I was thinking of a guy like Frank Netter, you know, the famous anatomy drawing guy. But you're, it seems more like the Harvard BioVisions group, where they make these fancy, I wouldn't call it CAD, but um, animations of molecular motors and, and in interiors of the cells. Are you familiar with the Harvard BioVisions? Yes. Yeah. I'm, uh, I know these guys. Uh, I, I have a very, very big amount of, uh, uh, of uh, respect to these guys. It's, it's really fantastic work that, that they do uh, in a video inside the cell. It's a very big amount of scientific work, so uh, it's a job uh, that can't be done without uh, a lot of scientists. Yeah, I mean, so, my, my background is more of the CAD, like SolidWorks type stuff, but I'm just curious, what kind of software 
would they use? Is it custom or is it something like uh, the Rhino or Maya? I mean, I've played around with Maya, but it, to create those kind of animations, it's, it seems like it'd be a, a huge job with a package like that. As I know, they uh, used the uh, soft image uh, from Autodesk, uh, and uh, they use it very hard and uh, with some kind of special plugins, uh, but uh, they really work and they really give a very clear and beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. So uh, I use in my work uh, 3D Studio Max from Autodesk and uh, Cinema 4D from Maxon. Uh, and they can do the same results, but uh, of course uh, it takes time. It takes a lot of time. Uh, John, have you heard of those pro programs, John? Uh, yeah, I, I know Autodesk has a few packages that they're tailoring towards the life sciences, and actually also with 3D printing now they've come out with their own packages mm -hmm. to be compatible with some of the new concepts in, in uh, biomedicine and 3D printing. My question is, that for the brain, people really ha have a lot of variance, and it, it's the job of the illustrator to pretty much define what they're, what really is there in terms of averaging things together. Like if you're familiar with the, the basal ganglia and the striatum, people really don't know what it looks like in, in 3D, and, and the artists have the job of, of defining that. You know, like, for example, the, the nucleus accumbens in the front of the basal ganglia if you're familiar, what does that look like? You know, people have it like a blob or a nucleus, but what is it really? You know. Uh, so we we can we know exactly how can it looks like. So we have a lot of uh, micro slides from uh, microscopes, and uh, these microscopes uh, give us very clear and uh, very uh, predictable picture. But this picture is uh, not the picture that uh, we uh, want to see. So it's it's very uh, it's not sharp. It's uh, very uh, it's clear, but but it's right. not informative. So it's, so it's kind of kind of blurry, kind of not yeah, not distinct. Yes, yes, yes. And it uh, haven't uh, any kind of. Uh, uh, any kind of uh, understanding how how the things uh, are on how how they compound uh, and how they stick together. Uh, medical animator can uh, make this uh, all of these uh, things, all of these parts uh, in different materials, in different colors, and we can see the in internal structure of uh, nucleus or internal structure of cell. But uh, in uh, microscopy, we can use uh, several uh, kind of chemicals to to show uh, these layers and show different organelles and uh, so on. It's very difficult to process, and uh, all information uh, can be uh, understood only by uh, physician or only by scientist. Not uh, about uh, usually people. It's uh, impossible. So my work is to show people how it uh, can be and uh, how it uh, looks looks inside the body. Okay, so, so you have to, like I think we went over this last time we talked, you really have to know anatomy and pretty well. Uh, it's not as if you're going to something you don't know anything about. You, you have to know, you have to study anatomy, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's very big uh, amount of so, so you can you must be more scientist than uh, artist so it's it's, it's just uh, rule number one. Okay, well you have some slides you want to show us, uh, Yuri? Yes, I have uh, several slides. So now, um, okay. now I can show them somehow. Do you know the screen share? E yes, yes. So. It's a green arrow at the top on the left side of the menu. Uh -huh. Just one, one second. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, there you go. Okay. Beautiful. It looks like Picasso. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, but it's a very interesting thing. Uh, it's a uh, three-mer of uh, uh, one very complex uh, molecular structure from uh, AIDS uh, virus. HIV. Oh, really? yes. it's a, it's a, wow, it looks so innocent. Yes, it's, uh, 
it's very uh, uh, very clear picture and it can uh, can be very useful for uh, most of scientists it can show the sites uh, how uh, this virus can interact with human cells well when you see an HIV virus uh, Yuri you can spot it it's very distinct uh, yes, it's it's very interesting structure, but I see it only under the microscope. So, okay. and several times I have uh, done uh, some illustrations, but uh, okay, but nothing special. I have okay. one more slide to show you. Okay, you can see it. Is so, okay, is this also HIV? Papillomavirus, human, uh, human papillomavirus, which causes uh, cervical cancer. Okay. Oh, pap now, pap papillovirus. Yes, papillovirus, yes. Okay. And now we can see how it can uh, interact uh, inside the human nucleus of the cell. So we can see nuclear pore, so it's some kind of a door to human nucleus and a door to human uh, uh, DNA. So we can now see how it can share uh, his uh, genetic information with the genetic information inside human cell. You know, with uh, digitalization, microscopes are getting more powerful every year. So I'm sure you noted that you can see a lot more today than you could 15 years ago. Yes, that's right. And these are pretty small. It's pretty small resolution, and that's a nucleus there on the left side. It's uh, uh, one pore of a nucleus, so it's uh, some kind of tiny hole in the nucleus. Oh, okay. Yes, and uh, through this tiny uh, pore, uh, <laughs> genetic information can flow inside the cell. So I, I can show it in another one slide, so now I show it. Okay. So this one is the nucleus pore in cross-section. So we can see a DNA strand that can flow inside nucleus. Wow. Mm, okay, it's nice. That's where, yeah, transcription of RNA, right? Yes, it, it's very, very mm, detailed mo model of this uh, nuclear pore. And uh, even uh, in, inside the nucleus, we can see the picture like this. So it's human chromosomes. Wow, that's inside the nucleus. Yes, that's inside the nucleus. So wow, it's a lot of proteins and uh, chromosomes. Well, so the chromosomes are actually actually have that shape because that's how they look in textbooks, but that's how it looks in real life too. Yes, yes. All these proteins, all this stuff is uh, from the real protein database uh, models. So it's uh, real shapes, it's real forms like uh, general proteins, like viruses, like all other stuff. So I can't make any mistake in these shapes or in these forms. I can change only colors and add some lights, that's all. Right, to make it look interesting. Yes, 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 that's, that's right. Now, Yuri, are these directly taken from microscope or... or are electron micrograph images, or do you interpret them and, and change the way they fit uh, in, the, in the shapes? Uh, I see that it's very close to microscopic images, so uh, maybe it, I remove some additional details, some of uh, large proteins, uh, because of uh, we can't see any empty space inside human cell. It's packed very yeah. tight. So you can see any hole, any empty space. So here we have a lot of empty space. Because of I want to show only chromosomes and some of proteins. So that's all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The um, wow. The more resolution, the more discovery. Yes. And one more slide that I want to show you. It's the uh, next uh, step in resolution, so we can see a cross section of uh, uh, cell membrane, and we can see uh, proteins uh, which can bind with uh, some kind of drug and uh, transfer uh, this drug inside the cell. So this is connection with nanomedicine and my work. Right, Bring, bringing drugs to the right spot. Yes, 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 that's right. So, uh, if these drawings are 
say on, on Google Images, uh, say I'm looking for a cover picture for an article I write, are they in the open domain or, or Creative Commons, or how are, how do you distribute or protect them? Uh, most of these uh, pictures uh, I show you uh, in original, so most of them is uh, belongs to me, and I have a uh, right to use them. Right. But most, uh, yes, yes, yes. Co copyright. Uh, copyright. Yes, copyright. Yes, and uh, but most copyrights are belongs to my uh, uh, contractors, to people uh, to whom I do some uh, kind of images. Right. To companies and to uh, other people. You know, one one question. This is kind of going back a little bit, Yuri. But do you kind of glimpse in the microscope and then make the drawing, or you just do it by your memory? What it look like? Oh no, I'm uh, uh, so <laughs> now I'm uh, very uh, very rare to look at inside microscope because of uh, there is no so powerful microscopes to see individual uh, atoms uh, just okay. but but right now maybe okay. it will be okay. yes five or ten years and we will see it very clear. Uh, but uh, I have a lot of uh, databases of uh, microscopic uh, images uh, from actual uh, uh, atom force microscopy and uh, scanning tunneling microscopy. Uh, I have a lot of those images. Uh, and I make this picture directly under influence of uh, these pictures. So like uh, for those phospholipid heads there, you draw one and then you just copy and paste a whole bunch of them and move them around or resize them or, or change the orientation and that's how you generate the image? Uh, yes, but uh, this is some kind of uh, tricks uh, I, uh, like in this image I show it. So in this image I simulate the whole human cell with nucleus, with endoplasmatic reticulum, with mitochondria and I show uh, drug particles which uh, can be uh, can be absorbed by the cell, uh, and uh, this uh, my work is uh, not only with arranging these uh, organelles and not with arranging shapes of lights. I make some kind of physical laws to all of these uh, objects. So uh, okay. I say uh, which simulation can be. So if if we see this slide, I I can say how this membrane can be bent and how it can uh, can be uh, when uh, actually drug uh, will uh, interact with this uh, proteins. So I, I can do the simulation in the dynamics too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, oh, that's beautiful. So every illustration it's uh, some kind of frozen movie. So I can uh, s press play and we can see how it can live uh, on the cellular c cellular uh, laws. So all of this can can be unfrozen, but it takes some time. So, well, does, does the software automatically do that, or do you have to ask the software to do it? Uh, some of uh, some part of this doing software, but mostly do it. Uh, by, I do it by myself. Oh, okay. Uh, one more slide that I can show to you. It's some uh, sort of uh, cross section of human skin, and in this case, uh, I uh, write some kind of law to grow the cells to be. Uh, very, very close to real uh, human cell distribution mm -hmm. inside the epithelium. You know, when, when I post these pictures on the internet, uh, invariably people comment on them. They say, man, that is so beautiful. Uh, and they don't even know where it's from or anything else. They just say, it's uh, physically very beautiful. <laughs> It's like, a, it's like a piece of art, actually. Oh, thank you very much. But, uh, but yes, nature uh, inside of us is not so beautiful at all. It's some kind of uh, bundles, uh, some kind of uh, very lot of water, very lot of uh, protein, right, right. Uh, lipids. Yeah. Yes, so, it's, yeah. it's not this distinct. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, we, we haven't enough colors to see them, we haven't enough shapes, 
But in general, if we can uh, sort and organize all of this information, it uh, will look like this picture. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we talked. Do you have any pictures of, uh, of nerves or of the brain? Or are they all just cells and, and smaller? Uh, yes, I have a lot of pictures of uh, brain cells, but unfortunately uh, not in this slide that I prepared. Okay. Uh, here I have uh, some sort of uh, uh, frames from my new animation. Here is uh, one of these frames. It's bloodstream and the human T cell attacks uh, cancer metastasis cell. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, so actually we, we can see how it uh, happens. So how uh, human immune system can uh, fight against ca cancer. Cool. And uh, one more slide about nanomedicine. It's uh, one of my client, uh, job, job for one of my client. It's a drug, a new type of drug, uh, which contains uh, oxaplatelin uh, like a uh, driving agent. And uh, this nanoparticle can uh, be absorbed by cancer cell, and uh, it uh, works only inside cancer cell and kills uh, directly cancer cells. So this is illustration of uh, how it can looks like. Oh, uh, which is the cancer cell? The blue, blue the blue cell, the cancer cell? Uh, no, no, no. The cancer cell is the whole of this uh, yellow uh, landscape. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's the whole thing, and that yes. and that's that's a molecule. Which is the molecule? Which is which is the molecule that brings the drug? And which is the drug? Uh, drug is uh, fixed by this one left slide, uh, oh, which okay. uh, called oxaplatelin compound. Okay. Yes, and it, oh, uh, okay. So it it's some kind of uh, blue uh, clouds, small okay. blue clouds, okay. and. Uh, and we can see uh, in the right uh, folic acid, uh, this is some kind of a key to open the cancer cell. Okay. And in this slide, we can see how uh, very big amount of these nanoparticles needed to kill one cancer cell. Okay. So the oxaliplatin, the dark blue, is just a little component of the whole artificial yes. light blue yes. construct? That's all. Yes, that's right, yes. Mm. So this is an uh, example of commercial uh, job uh, that I do mostly every day. Okay. So one more slide is uh, it showed how we can see uh, modern uh, cancer treatment technology such as uh, chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. okay. so it, it's very interesting process, but it's very painful process, and most of patients want to know how it can be and uh, how it uh, uh, can can be explained. And uh, that's one slide of from animation explains how it uh, happens now. Okay. And those little green dots are, are the uh, chemo, uh, the drug. Yes, yes. Uh, little green dots. It's chem chemo drug. Okay. And uh, this is a uh, big lung tumor we can see. Okay. <laughs> Treated by these nanoparticles. Uh, and then, then uh, one more slide. Uh, it's just the same. It shows how tumor shrinks uh, under the presence of these nanoparticles. Okay. So we can see very, very different uh, aspects of this uh, uh, job. So it's very, very unpredictable. It's uh, have a very lot of uh, appliances in uh, medicine. So it's not just nanomedicine, it's uh, medicine at, at all. Yeah, the more resolution, the more discovery. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Well, you know, Yuri, uh, you started in this, you say, seven years ago? Yes, yes. Now, uh, would you say there's been a lot of progress in the nanomedicine field with carrying drugs to uh, specific areas? 
Oh, there's a lot of very big progress in this field. So, uh, as I know, maybe five years ago, uh, we can treat prost prostate cancer using nanoparticles. Five years ago, it's it was very very uh, big step uh, forward. Okay. And and but by now we have a lot of drugs to uh, demonstrate how cancer. Uh, can uh, grow and how it changed. It's uh, very important to physicians too. It's very interesting information. We can get it directly from uh, nanomedicine uh, contrast agents and a new kind of nanomedicine diagnostics and dimension. Okay. Very good. So that's nanomedicine and oncology. Do you find yourself, and I'll get off the screen share, are you done with the slides, uh, Yuri? Uh, yes, yes. I'm mostly okay. done with the slides. Okay. okay, just click on the screen share again. That'll take off the screen share. Mm -hmm. Click on, there you go. Okay. Okay, the companies uh, you work for are American companies or the French companies. It seems like nanomedicine is very big in France. Do you do a lot yes. of work for French companies? Uh, yes, I very I had a lot of uh, French companies, and uh, uh, first of all, it's uh, nanobiotics. Uh, it's very very large uh, French company about uh, cancer drug delivery, and it's, it's very rapid change. It's um, a very interesting company, uh, but I'm working mostly on uh, my customers in the United States, in uh, in Australia, in France. Uh, in Spain, so in uh, in Russia, so it's a lot of people all around the world. So, okay, okay. so would you, because I I spend a lot of time on the internet and I do a lot of browsing for interesting developments in nanomedicine, but I have seen a lot of discoveries going on in Europe. Uh, it seems like almost as much as the United States, even though there's probably not as many big labs. Uh, it seems like it's bigger in France than it would be than it is in the United States to me, but maybe that's just perception. Maybe, but um, but it's a lot of uh, in uh, USA too. Oh, okay. where where are they based out of in USA? It's all over. I know there's a big company that just moved to Boston, Nanobiox, I think it's called. But uh, yes. I hear about this company and a lot of companies is. Uh, in uh, biotechnology Bay area in San Diego. San Diego so is a big of cent the center of nanomedicine, would you say, in the United States? Uh, one of the centers, it's indeed. Okay, I, I know there's some in, in uh, Silicon Valley, too. In San Francisco. Yes. But, uh, well, John, do you have any questions? No, no, that was, that was really great to see. Thanks. Yeah, Yuri, very good. So, uh, so your your time spent now is mostly on uh, oncology drugs. Yes, because of uh, I have a large uh, project uh, on uh, which I work in. Uh, so, in my free time, it's uh, about covering cancer and oncology genesis and uh, modern can cancer and uh, modern oncology treatment. So, I do it in my free time and. Uh, I think all of this uh, will be interesting to all people who uh, have ca cancer and ha who have a problems connected with cancer. Yeah, it just seems that like things are improving uh, so much uh, with time, and they'll just continue to increase. The stronger the microscopes get, the stronger the tools get to be able to see things better and better and better. Uh, because of Moore's law, every two years the processor is getting doubling in power. Uh, the future looks good, I think, uh, for nano medicine. So, okay, John, thanks for coming by, and Yuri, of course, thanks again for another great presentation. And just hang on, we'll we'll do some chatting. Goodbye, world. All right.